Good morning, folks. Welcome to That's My Farm. I'm Jim Schroyer, your host. And you know, it's Halloween time, and we all know that pumpkins are orange, right? Well, wrong. Not all pumpkins are orange. Some are pink. And we're in Western Finney County this morning, and we're going to be talking to Maggie Roth here in just a second. And she has an FFA project that you'll want to hear about. So folks, stay with us. We'll be right back. Closed captioning brought to you by Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff, progress, powered by Kansas farmers. Tallgrass Commodities offers producers bulk commodities at a reasonable price with reliable service throughout the whole Midwest. To find out more about Tallgrass Commodities, visit tallgrass.us or call 785-494-8484. This hog is Hanover Hoof for meal made from U.S. soybeans. Now, one hog isn't that impressive, but suppose we add another, and another, and another. Before long, you've got billions of hungry customers around the world all clamoring for the same thing. Our soybeans. Learn more about the billion-dollar appetite of animal agriculture at beyondtheelevator.com. Brought to you by America's Soybean Farmers and their checkoff. That's My Farm is brought to you in part by Tall Grass Commodities. Big enough to serve, small enough to care. Good morning, folks. Welcome to That's My Farm. I'm Jim Schroyer, your host, and we're in luck because we're in western Finney County in the big town of Holcomb. And uh, with us today, we have Maggie Roth. And Maggie has probably got the biggest pink pumpkin patch in all of Kansas just not too far from Holcomb here. And uh, like I said, we all know we have orange pumpkins, but you've brought uh, pink pumpkins to Kansas, and, and I want to know why. Why, do you, why are you growing pink pumpkins? Well, we started off with my SAE because when I was a freshman and I came back from Louisville, from National Convention, we wanted to choose an SAE for me. So you know, SAE is what? It's a supervised agricultural experience. For your FFA uh, yes. project, okay. And we were doing some research on the internet that winter and we came across the Pink Pumpkin Patches Foundation website. Mm -hmm. And we did a little research on it and decided to call the president, who at the time was Don Goodwin, mm -hmm. and to see if we could get involved through the FFA, like as an FFA project. Mm -hmm. And he said that that'd be okay. And, but then we decided, why not get other chapters involved? So not just Holcomb, but here in yeah. the state, right? Well, throughout the nation, oh, we okay. were thinking, like try to get a f one or two chapters in so many states that year, and then grow from there. Mm -hmm. Now, this Pink Pumpkin Patch Foundation is basically for what? They have certain growers, like you can sign up and sign a contract with the Pink Pumpkin Patch Foundation and their seed companies and the growers will plant these pumpkins in late May or early June. And once they harvest in October, they will donate a certain percentage of each pumpkin sold back to the foundation. And then after everyone has given their money back to the foundation, the Pink, Pump Pink Pumpkin Patch Foundation will accumulate the money from all their different growers and give one or two grants to a breast cancer research organization that actually does the research, not just promoting it or actually doing real research. Is it just yours or is it the whole FFA organization here in Holcomb? I mean, do you have other uh, classmates that help you out with it? Well, it's my SAE, but I have classmates who will come and like help me hold the pumpkin patch, help me sell, and help me just do a lot of other things like set the irrigation system and harvest and stuff. Mm -hmm. so, so, so you have the football team coming out to uh, uh, help pick the pink pumpkins and, and load them up on the wagon and, and haul them off. So they're, they've helped in the, in the past and helping this harvest yeah. as well. Uh, so how many FFA programs here in the state or, or nationwide do you have uh, hooked up with this organization? Throughout the state, last time I checked, I think there were five or six. Mm -hmm. And throughout the entire nation, I think there were almost 60, I want to say. Well, good. Well, 
Maggie, don't go away, and I, we're going to go out to the patch and, and uh, pick some pumpkins and talk some more about how you actually grow it. Uh, but uh, don't go away, and you folks at home, don't go away. We'll be right back after these words. The Kansas Wheat Innovation Center in Manhattan is rediscovering ways to get improved varieties and new genetics in the hands of farmers faster. Grower-led and checkoff-funded research initiatives are bringing about positive change. This grassroots leadership provides a strong voice in Topeka and Washington, D.C. Now is the time to partner with Kansas Wheat in moving wheat forward. Kansas Wheat Commission and Kansas Association of Wheat Growers, farmers investing in their future and yours. Log on to rediscoverwheat.org. No matter where, no matter why, the Veterinary Health Center at Kansas State University is committed to providing quality patient care to animals and exceptional customer service to their owners. From routine checkups to emergency and specialty care, our world-renowned specialists and experienced professionals are here to discover, to teach, and to heal. Let us know. How can I help? How can we help? That's My Farm is brought to you in part by Tall Grass Commodities, big enough to serve, small enough to care. Welcome back to That's My Farm. I'm Jim Schroyer. We're in western Finney County, north of Holcomb, and we have Maggie Roth with us, and, and we're in the pink pank, <laughs> we're in the pink pumpkin patch. That's hard to say three times. And we have, we're joined by our dad, Dwayne, and, and uh, Maggie, let's talk a little bit about uh, production practices. Well, we plant either in late May or early June, and from there the seeds will usually take four months to fully grow into their pink stage. So what about uh, first week of June, uh, last of May, first week of June, what type of, uh, uh, how many seeds do you plant per foot of row? I know, uh, you know, corn or soybeans, when you're planting X number of seeds per foot of row, it's, not, it's nothing like that, yeah. is it? Well, in our finger planter, the boxes are each set 30 inches apart, but we only do every other box, so the rows are each 60 inches apart, and we plant every six feet. And there's not, there are not very many herbicides uh, labeled for, uh, uh, for pumpkins, I wouldn't think, uh, Duane. So what, what, do you, what, what do you do there? About a month before we plant them, we'll put, put on Prowl H2O, mm -hmm. and uh, hopefully Mother Nature will get a rain, get it, get it. Incorporated? Yeah, more uniform than what, because this is a flood little flood patch so it's hard to get the chemical incorporated the dry soils most of the time so and uh, this year you had a little bit of a problem with uh, uh, with hail damage uh, uh, not too long ago yeah we had a good hail storm come through here and it it wiped out probably a third of the plants at least and uh, you know they came back we went back in with the foliar feed and uh, an insecticide to kind of help the plants recover and it, it, it helped quite a bit but it was just a little Little too late, also. Right. So, what kind of what kind of bugs? Uh, uh, I, I'm thinking of one in particular. But what 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 kind of bugs problems do you have? I know you said you had an insecticide. You you fly that on? Squash bugs is our nemesis. These are our enemy. We we can have a pumpkin patch and move it four miles away. There'll be squash bugs all over the place. And uh, yeah, we have a, a local uh, crop, duster. App, crop duster, and he'll uh, donate his time and money and. We'll put on Warrior, we'll put on some stuff for uh, a fungicide to help the plants stay greener longer. Uh -huh. And uh, fungicide helps just as much as uh, the insecticide. Right, that's, that's interesting. What kind of uh, nitrogen rates do you, or, or fertilizer, I said nitrogen, but what other uh, fertility program do you have? We put on a product called uh, USB 1240D and it right. put on about a, oh, I think 100 pounds. And so 40% of that mm -hmm. would be uh, uh, what, 60, I mean about, yeah, you have so much, I think to grow actually good pumpkins out here, you know, we need about 100 pounds of it, and we kind of overdo it, but just Mother Nature's pretty unforgiving. Mm -hmm. And we like, it likes the phosphate. You know, we really need to get the phos on. So we put about, you know, about the same amount on as for nitrogen. I'd like to get about 100 pounds of phosphate on them. Oh, really? So we're seeing a few uh, yellow ones here. Uh, look like they're not ripe, but as opposed to pink, what they're supposed to be this time of year. What, what happened there? Well, usually when they don't turn pink, it's because they didn't get enough heat, and this summer was a lot cooler than last summer was. 
and we just had a few really, really cold weeks, mm -hmm. and that really did some damage. So what kind of uh, yields do you normally get? How many, basically? How, uh, I'm not thinking about bushels here, yeah. but uh, how many how many thousand pumpkins do you get per acre, usually? What's, well, what's a range, a good yield? Well, last year we had about a little over two and a half acres, and I think we had 8,000, 9,000 pumpkins. Wow, that's a lot of pumpkins. Yeah. That's, that's the reason for that $28,000 donation yeah. to breast cancer. Okay, well, don't go away, folks. Uh, uh, and you folks at home, don't go away either. We have to hear from our sponsors, so we'll be right back. American innovation is being driven in places you might not expect by people like Brent Hayek, an Oklahoma family farmer who recently set a world land speed record in a Ford Super Duty pickup truck powered by renewable B20 biodiesel. Advanced performance is here now, putting America on the fast track to more jobs and energy independence. Biodiesel, America's advanced biofuel. Now another gardening tip with Annette Jackson. Fall is a great time to plant trees, shrubs, and perennials. Root development this fall means more growth with less watering next year. For faster root growth, always use Vertilone Root Stimulator. It is the only stimulator which contains IBA rooting hormone. Use Vertilone tree and shrub food after the plant has been planted for a month. Save 25% now on Jackson's homegrown hardy perennials. Let Jackson's friendly staff help you select the best plants for your landscape. That's My Farm is brought to you in part by Tall Grass Commodities. Big enough to serve, small enough to care. Welcome back to That's My Farm. It's Halloween and we're waiting for the great pumpkin. And uh, not really, but uh, we're in a pink pumpkin patch. Maggie and, and Dwayne, Ralph. Uh, where, where do you market these pink pumpkins? Well, we market them at usually one football game a year. And uh, my school is Dig Pink Night. Mm -hmm. and a breast cancer yes. effort, uh, fundraiser. Yeah and we usually market them somewhere in Garden City. Okay, that's a lot of pumpkins to, uh, to, to be moving at yeah. this time of year. That's a, I, didn't, you, didn't I hear you say uh, your goal is to have a, a pink pumpkin on everybody's front porch? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is, that, is that in the state or nationwide? Everywhere. <laughs> Everywhere. That's, that's, a, that's a really good cause. Uh, Dwayne, you gotta be proud of Maggie. So, yep, very uh, proud. So tell us a little bit about uh, her, her and her project. Yeah, when it started off, it just was a, you know, about a, just a single pumpkin patch, and uh, then a few other FFA chapters caught on to it, and, and, uh, and it went across the nation, and uh, you know, and it's just like everything else. Some, some, some did really well, and there, there's always a learning curve mm -hmm. when you're growing a squash plant. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I think they're not just doing it to grow pumpkins; they did it because somebody they know or, 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 or somebody in their family has been affected by breast cancer. Well, it's about one in eight, so that's uh, over 12% of, of women will face uh, breast cancer sometime in their life. Yeah. There's a FFA chapter in the United States, uh, I forget where it was, but he, he raised them and his mom actually died of breast cancer and they, they sold it at local football games. So it's a, you know, it hits close to home for a lot of, a lot of kids that are, are NFA or, or just, you know, in a family. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But while this is pink pumpkins, is, uh, this is a pink pumpkin patch, it's kind of new, but you've been growing pumpkins for, actually orange pumpkins for, for quite a while. About 26 years. 26 years. And what, do you, what have you done with those over the years? Uh, we got a, first it started as our local school would come out, so preschool through fourth, fifth grade would come out all the classes, and we got some local churches, we got the library, they, they, they do a fundraiser, and then the the zoo, uh, they have a fundraiser to raise money for the animals and uh, uh, keep up, keep and everything. And right. so we donate, we just donate the pumpkins to them. So it sounds like to me the, uh, the Ralph family has been doing uh, uh, donations, uh, uh, these kind of efforts for, for a long time. And you've just kind of carried on in that tradition, haven't you? Yeah. Okay. Well, that's really good. I, I, that's, that is a wonderful uh, program that you're doing. And, and so don't go away. It will be right back. And you folks at home, you don't go away either. We'll be right back. Car Waters has what you need for all seasons for around the farm and home. Working, hunting, growing, feeding, 
snow removal, even fun for the kids, and a service department with experienced techs to help keep your equipment in top running condition. Tar Waters has a huge selection and the best prices. Tar Water Farm and Home, family owned and operated since 1978. They have what you need. National Bank Ag Professional, you'll be a good company. They'll help you track expense lines, manage variable input costs, assess ground agreements, pick a crop protection plan. These times demand Ag Professionals. Central National Bank, you could profit from what they know. Ag operations run better on Central Time. Central National Bank, money for life. Member FDIC in your hometown since 1884. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Hello friends, I'm Ernie Rodina. And I'm Don Dawson with the Better Horses Radio Show. For over nine years, we've been bringing the Better Horses Radio Show to markets all across the Midwest. We talk about God, lots about horses. We talk about cows, we talk about horse health, we talk to top trainers, and we even talk about Roy Rogers. We're having a blast with Better Horses Radio Show and would love to take it to a market near you. So visit our website at betterhorsesradio.com and let us or your local radio station know you'd like to hear it in your area. The Better Horses Radio Show is unbelievable. That's My Farm is brought to you in part by Tall Grass Commodities. Big enough to serve, small enough to care. Welcome back to That's My Farm. We're in western Finney County. We have Dwayne Roth and his, his daughter Maggie. Maggie is the pink pumpkin queen uh, <laughs> for the state. And uh, guys, uh, you know, pink pumpkins, how in the world did we, did we come up with pink pumpkins? How, how are they different than, than uh, orange pumpkins? Uh, well, I came up with them by actually the breeder who started breeding them. He just found it in a field of regular ones and he bred them from there and took the seeds from that one. This has been what, within the past 10 years? Yeah. Okay, Okay. so uh, they, they look more gourd, gourd shape than uh, normal orange pumpkins. I'm thinking, you know, those big orange pumpkins, and these seem to be more gourd or squash uh, uh, type, but boy, you lift one of these puppies up and it's heavy. Yeah. So, uh, uh, what, uh, what, what's the, what's the deal on the heaviness and the, and the, and the size the and the density of it? Well, it's a whole lot denser than your regular orange pumpkins. I'd say it's at least three times as heavy as like this one, and if you find orange pumpkin its size, this one's going to be three times as heavy mm -hmm. in pounds. Okay, so um, and that's made up mainly by of the of the the wall here, the mm -hmm. uh, whatever whatever you call call the outside of a, of a pumpkin. So uh, let's let's cut it open and see uh, see how that see how it works, and you can just kind of see that it's kind of hard to cut there. The uh, Maggie, you were telling me a little bit ago about. Uh, the, the sweetness uh, uh, of, of these pumpkins versus a, a regular pumpkin. Mm -hmm. I do like pumpkin pie, uh, so if you want to make one for me, I, I'd appreciate mm -hmm. it. But <laughs> I like it with whipped cream. Uh, so, so well, that's, that's a, that is kind of tough there. And the wall is so much thicker. But inside of a pink pumpkin, it's not pink. It's, it's just like a normal yeah. orange pumpkin. But uh, yeah, look at that. There's a, there's a seed there as well. But you have a you have a nice wall here, and then this is the, the meat here. You really can't make jack-o'-lanterns out of these, can you? No, you have we've to tried. Have, have to have a real long knife, and so so these are uh, these are interesting uh, interesting development. To, so you can see the see the seed, normal pumpkin seed. They dry those and. Now let's uh, here. Of course, here's a green uh, a pumpkin seed. So let's talk about what you what you plant. We we talked about planting procedures a while ago, and uh, those aren't anything like what what we're seeing here. So tell us a little bit about. Uh, obviously, those are treated with a yes. insecticide, yeah. fungicide, and uh, and you'll drop two or three every six feet. Uh huh. So the pink uh, pumpkin foundation sends you how many seeds? Well, for FFA and 4-H clubs, they'll send up to 5,000 seed for free. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so that's how many we got, because that plants around three acres. 
So basically, five thousand. We'll we'll plant mm -hmm. three. We'll plant uh, three acres. Okay, that's really interesting. Well, uh, stay with us. I, we've got one more segment to do, and and folks, you stay with us as well. We'll be right back after these words. is the fast track to more jobs and America's energy independence. Advanced performance is here now. Biodiesel, America's advanced biofuel. Hey folks, Dr. Dan from Doc Talk, and y'all are well aware that I teach at Kansas State University's College of Veterinary Medicine. And on Saturday, November 8th, there's gonna be a meeting. This meeting is gonna be held for veterinarians and producers to understand the new regulations, whether it's veterinary feed directives or other regulations associated with antibiotic usage that will affect you and your veterinarian. Be sure to join me in Manhattan, Kansas on November 8th and get registered prior to that at www.ksvma.org. See you Saturday, November 8th in the Little Apple. Buying a car shouldn't be this hard. And at Brown Chevrolet Buick in Wamego, it isn't. It's actually awesome. Whether you want a new or used car or truck, Toby's team can make the deal. Even if you want to custom order a new car or truck, Toby's team can make the deal. See Toby's team at Brown Chevrolet Buick in Wamego. We're awesome. Soil is the life of a farm, and for 25 years, SureCrop Liquid Crop Nutrition has helped growers produce abundant quality crops while preserving and improving the soils they steward. SureCrop offers complete soil and plant analysis with cropping recommendations, delivery direct to your on-farm storage, and quality crop nutrition custom blended for your field. Choose SureCrop for the assurance of excellence for your soil. Call today or visit their website for more information. That's My Farm is brought to you in part by Tall Grass Commodities. Big enough to serve, small enough to care. Welcome back, folks. So that's My Farm. I'm Jim Schroyer. We're in Maggie Roth's pumpkin patch. And Maggie, tell us a little bit more about the connection between the you know, Pink Pumpkin Patch Foundation and breast cancer. Well, the Pink Pumpkin Patch Foundation's president is actually a breast cancer survivor. And her husband is the seed breeder who first found the pink pumpkin patch seed. So they just kind of put two and two together and established the foundation themselves. Mm -hmm. And so they have different growers from across the nation, whether it's a commercial grower, 4-H club, or FFA chapter. And after all these different growers are done for the season, they send their money back to the pink pumpkin patch foundation. And the they foundation will accumulate all the money and pull it together and then send it and then award a grant to a breast cancer research organization of their choice but they try to get an organization that has the highest amount of dollar going to actual research right, instead of right. just promoting awareness. Right. So uh, let me ask you how much were you able to donate to the Pink Pumpkin Patch Foundation this past year? Well, last year I ended up donating over twenty-eight thousand dollars. Twenty-eight thousand dollars. Yeah. Holy moly! That's that's uh, that's a lot of pumpkins. Yeah. And this year you have three uh, excuse me three acres of yeah. pumpkins, and and you're hoping to shoot for that at that again this year, huh? Yeah, we sure hope. Okay, so if someone is interested in an FFA or 4-H organization, uh, how do you how do you get in contact? How do they get in contact? Well, most people go through the foundation, and so they would Google Pink Pumpkin Patch uh -huh. Foundation. Okay. And you can like see it on Facebook or Twitter or any social media, I believe. Mm -hmm. Well, Maggie, I tell you what, you're a remarkable person and uh, for a junior in high school, raise uh, 28,000 bucks and more, more this year. I'm pleased that you joined us and talked a little bit about your, uh, your project for FFA and, and thank you for having us. And you folks at home, uh, glad you joined us. And next Friday, be with us because we're going to be back with That's My Farm. Thank you. Closed captioning brought to you by Kansas Soybean Commission, 
The Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers.